Welcome to Bite Size Bios. This is meant to be a mini-sode that will accompany HGTH. Every week, I will pick a person from history and dive into their lives. All right, welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Bios BSB. This is episode number 32 coming at you guys. We are going to be talking about a man named Mansa Musa. That is a mouthful. He's the richest man ever to exist on the face of the earth. And we're going to get down to the brass tacks of who this man was. I'll not bury the lead. I should mention it later. I did not know he was real until about a couple days ago. So that's going to be a lot of learning for me and you. But because this is the, is the mini episode to the How Did That Happen? We, of course, have to go back and talk about the last episode of HTTH before we get to the new Bite Size Bio material. Last week's episode was on the American Civil War. We talked about how that came to be. Learned a lot of things. Learned a lot about some battles that happened that were basically not in the name of the Civil War, but had everything to do with the Civil War. Uh, specifically, Bleeding Kansas. Looking at you, Nebraska. Kansas, over there. You know, I see you guys. Um, that, like I said, and I've mentioned it probably now in like four or five podcasts. I don't know. It interests me a lot. And I think there will be a, probably a Bleeding Kansas episode. Um, I, I had no idea that really the Kansas kind of fought a civil war before we fought a civil war that that to me was one of the larger takeaways for how the civil war happened because you think they always try to break it down um you know i've heard i've heard the caning thing the charles sumner um you know they beat that guy with the cane almost beat him to death over slavery i've heard the um fort sumter stuff you know but i've never i mean i don't think so Never really heard up until the past few weeks and months this bleeding Kansas stuff. This, 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 what those guys went through, even though, like I said, I've seen that. I watched the show, um, Good Lord Bird, I believe it was, was with uh, Ethan Hawke about John Brown. And I have to go back and watch now. I wonder if it, they were in, if that was during that time or not. It may have been. Cause that was that's pretty much what you know. John Brown was a large part of that. Um, like I said, he was the guy who actually you know went out there and or, I don't know if it was him specifically, but his guys went out there and killed those five uh, pro-slavery activists in front of their families, which is, you know, it's just, it's, it's a lot. Uh, it's aggressive behavior to say the least. Um, but so yeah, that's, so that was, that was last week's episode. I don't know if there's much else. I was trying to think of good uh, Civil War movies. And actually, you know what, I'm going to Google that real fast since we're talking about it. Cause I can only think, I can only think of one. I can only think of one Civil War movie. And it's, um, you can't even think of it. Glory. That's what it is. Yeah, Glory. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. Um, let's see. Because I was trying to find a Civil War meme. Because I realized they just don't have them. That just doesn't doesn't really exist. I found one. Um, it's kind of funny. It's not that that funny, but okay. Well, now now that I'm seeing a list of them, of course, yes, some of them are coming back. Of course, there's Gone with the Wind, um, Gettysburg, which I have seen. Gettysburg is a pretty good movie. There's one called Cold Mountain. I didn't know that the good, the, the good, and the bad, and the ugly was a Civil War movie. Um, I've seen that before. At least, I guess not. Didn't watch it that well. It's set in the backdrop of the Civil War. Three men, stoic gunslinger and a ruthless hitman and a wanted outlaw, all race against time and each other to find a Confederate treasure buried somewhere in the war-torn countryside. Ooh, let me listen to that. But yeah, so um, I don't think there's much else to say. I hope you guys like that one. I, I really enjoy doing that one. I, I would. I want to. I want to say I want to do more wars, but I don't know. I want to. I'm. I'm going to try to find some more interesting topics. I have a couple that I've. You know, I was set out that was supposed to happen for the summer, and now that I look back, I don't. I'm like, I don't know if that's really going to be where I want to be headed um, as we head into this uh, continuing out the rest of these summer months here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't want to ramble too much before we get to the episode. As always, ACT happened for all the extras. ACT happened dot com um, at ACT happened for the socials. Uh, like this if you uh, if give, or give us five stars if you do like this uh, two stars if you didn't like this tell us why you didn't like this because constructive criticism is always welcome um, I appreciate you guys coming back week to week and uh, press and play here with me uh, yeah but without further ado as we know to do here is the episode all right so we are here today to talk about a man that I for a long time wasn't sure actually existed uh, I'm not sure where I got that from, why my um, disbelief was so strong, but uh, his name is Mansa Musa, and he is basically considered to be the 
richest man of all time, richest person of all time, the person who at any point in time during their given life had acquired the most wealth of any human being to exist on this earth. That is Mansa Musa. And so I'm trying to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you his, um, biography, a quick biography of his life. And cause, cause I didn't, I knew nothing about this man short of, I guess I really thought he was fake. Not well, yeah, I thought he was like a, I don't know, like Wakanda or something. I don't know, but no, he was real. Um, he existed in um, the like the Mali Empire. It was really like the sphere of which was you know was what made him who he was. Uh, the Mali Empire was the largest and richest empire yet seen in West Africa, and was founded by Sundiata Kita Kaita, right? And um, basically, the Mali Empire stretched over a couple present day African countries. Um, and they had just a large, vast amount of wealth that was passed down from, from ruler to ruler. And that's how Mansa Musa actually got his um, wealth. They had had things like gold. They had salt, uh, which was a big thing back then. Still a pretty big thing now, but you know, not, I, don't, I don't think to the, to the degree it was back then. Uh, they sold a lot of different things. It was even said that they sold people. Uh, they sold slaves. I'm not sure if... I know he didn't because he was dead before... Um, this, the actual transatlantic slave trade, but I wonder if they didn't really say if the, the, the rulers of the Mali Empire ever actually sold slaves into like that actual slave trade. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so he, um, Mansa Musa was in the Mali Empire uh, that stressed over Ghana, um, they got the w- Walata, a lot of different names here that I'm not good at pronouncing. They were all um, Islamic. They, they, they had adopted Islam, uh, the, the faith, from their contact with Arab mer- merchants um, back around the 1200s, so that's really this is when, and I may have buried the lead. This is when Mansa Musa was around, and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you the whole thing in a second. I'm kind of just giving you a quick overview to set the stage because n- this is one of the oldest people I think we've done, or the one of the the, the longest going as far back. I think we did we did Alexander, Alexander the Great, I think, like episode three. But most of the other people have been relatively recently. Um, existing, if you will, but this guy kind of want to set the, the scene for for him. So I don't know if there's much else to say about him before I really get into his actual biography. I want to see him kind of scroll through the notes here. Um, I don't think so. So yeah, Mansa Musa was born in 1280, right in the Mali Empire. His brother's name was Mansa Abu Abu Bakar Abu Bakar B A K R. Not really sure. He I was laughing with somebody about this the other day, and it's not laughing is I don't like to laugh at. But it's just, it's just the way it happened. It's so a thousand years ago. Um, so basically, his brother was ruling the, um, the whole Mali Empire right around 1312. So that would put our friend Mansa Musa at about, what is it? He's 22, give or take. No, 32, excuse me, um, around this time. Well, his brother was super obsessed with finding the end of the Atlantic Ocean. That's why I say it sounds like a thousand years ago. We have maps now. We know where it ends. He's just like he's spending his whole day just being like, I got to know. I got to see it, bro. I got to know where it ends. The end of the Atlantic Ocean, you know, like he probably just goes on all day long, nonstop, uh, making drawings and just weird dreams about this stuff. And he reportedly embarks on an expedition with a fleet of 2000 ships and thousands of men, women and slaves to go find the end of the Atlantic Ocean. Get this, guys. He never came back gone so that's that's what i was laughing about is that is that is that dark humor i think definitely i'm laughing at a you know the death of the possibly potentially thousands of men women and probably children um but just that this guy was just you know had all the money in the world it's similar similar to the titanic uh submarines you know it's like you have all the money in the world but you want to go do what at that time nobody else is doing at that time nobody knows where the end of the atlantic ocean is nobody knows what's going on there but you want to be like i'm going to be that guy you have billions of dollars bro. just billions hundreds of billions of dollars which we'll get to that they're, they're stacked like you would not believe and they just want to go do some crazy stuff so yeah so his brother goes off never comes back that leads to mansa musa becoming the leader now mansa is like actually a name uh it's not like what is it i think it means i have it right here Okay, so yeah, Mansa, Mansa is actually means sultan or emperor um, and third-born child for whatever reason. But um, so that's actually, so his name is Musa, and, but Mansa is just what you get when you become, um, you know, the, the leader of things. So he was the, actually the ninth Mansa of the Mali Empire, uh, which reached their peak uh, during his time. So they, you know, it's kind of like he was leading when they were at the height, when they had all the wealth in the world. 
he was leading. And uh, what they say, what's actually interesting about what led to him having so much wealth as far as it being consolidated in such a specific place and not kind of more diversely, you know, spread out the way it is now nowadays, or at least somewhat, um, is that like in Europe at the time they were the, they were the, the countries were still they were not unified in any sort of way. There was a lot of infighting. There was a lot of battling between the different uh, small city states or small, very small countries. And then when you think about Germany itself, it was not Germany. It was a bunch of different smaller countries. And England was still fighting itself. And I mean, Ireland, I mean, that's a whole different, they're off the coast. But still, like, there was just, they were, nobody was, it wasn't Europe as we know it. They were becoming Europe as we know it. So they didn't have as much money as these guys did who would, I mean, they had, I guess they had their stuff together. But so, yeah, so Mansa, like I said, then he was the ninth Mansa of uh, the Mali Empire. Richest dude out there. There's not much that's, that's really said about him. I've done a, a fair bit of research. I mean, not, I, I wouldn't say exhaustive, um, but I've read a few articles. Um, and, you know, they, so just, they, they, they talk about his trip to his Hajj to, to uh, Mecca in 1324, uh, which was only a couple years after he had um, become leader when his brother sailed off the face of the earth and killed thousands of people. But so in 1324, he uh, travels to Mecca, and during that time, he stops in a couple of different places, one of them being Cairo, um, where his lavish gift-giving of gold is said to have actually affected the economy in, or the value of gold in Egypt. So that's how rich this guy was. He was just straight giving out gifts, right? Of just, you get, he just Oprah and just Oprah, you know, every, just Oprah love, just, you get gold and you get gold. Come get some gold. You get, look under your seat. There's some gold. Um, you know, he does that so much that just like, it, it messes with how much gold actually how 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 the value of the actual gold it kind of changes because this guy is so generous and has so much to give away um but there's you know i don't know he he unified more parts of western africa which it's hard to say because they're not unified now so it's no point in really mentioning the stuff that he did in my opinion of that stuff it's just stuff that happened and uh didn't really hold I'm trying to see if there's anything else it, it, it is still bite-sized you know that there's not there's there is some i guess i'm glossing over some stuff but like I said, it's like, oh, you unified stuff that's no longer unified. What's the point of talking about the fact that you unified it? Um, I did want to mention before we get out of here, before I forget to put it in here and it just, you know, gets lost. This guy had $400 billion. That was what it was said to be his fortune, you know, or the fortune of his empire. So I think it gets lost. People talk about, you know, it's in, in comparison to like Jeff Bezos or, or Elon Musk. Like these guys, that's, that's their, that's their, that's their, it's all, it's all, everything that they have is their net worth with like their properties and all that stuff, but it's all of them. This guy was a leader of a, an empire that had $400 billion, which I think is a little bit different, but he still had the access to all of it. I'm not trying to take away from him. I just feel like, you know, it's a caveat worth um, mentioning, but yeah, 400 billion. I mean like, so what I think Elon Musk has like 200 billion now. So even, even now he's still halfway on the two what Mansa Musa um, had accrued in his lifetime. Just wanted to make sure that didn't get lost in the episode. Next, we'll jump to his death, which no one's really sure when he actually died. I, people say 1337, uh, but there's also some different, um, you know, because the, these are all accounts of, of, you know, when when he met this guy or, 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 or when, when he was supposed to be in such, such and such city and they saw him, but they're not sure if when they saw him, was it actually his son or was it him or, or, or did the letter that was written about his presence being there, did it get there three years too late? Was it a Juneteenth situation? You know, so they don't know when this guy actually died. We're saying 1337. Uh, what he actually died of, I am not sure. Let me see if I have any sort of thing in my notes that might mention it. No, I'm not seeing anything there. It's like I said, they're saying he could have died even before 13, 1337, like 1332 maybe. I mean, at this point, 700 years later, really know. So they don't mention what he died of. But yeah, so that's Mansa Musa. I hope that was, um, I hope that was worth listening to a little bit. I, I found it interesting. At least to know this guy is real. Like I said, I didn't think he was real. Now I know that. Okay, Mansa Musa, right? Pretty cool name. Uh, first off, I found out that Mansa just means ruler, so it's really just Musa. Uh, but I hope you guys like that. That's more where I kind of want to be taking the direction of this uh, this, spe- this specific part of the podcast, uh, the bite-sized bio part. I mean, I definitely want to do more, you know as many people as possible and keep it very diverse, but I noticed I was kind of covering this, not the same people, but this people at the same time frame, which to me makes you talk about the same thing. You know, you talk about, we talked about a lot of people who were born in the 40s and 
came to prominence in the 60s and 70s and their life and are still alive now. There's been a lot of people that we've talked about, so it's kind of just want to change it up and talk about somebody that was, you know, born almost a thousand years ago and, and, and was just a testament to my research to find out whether he even existed or not. Like I said, I can't make it enough, you know, I can't, I can't say this enough. I did not know this man was real until I started doing the research for this episode, which makes it makes me want to do the podcast. It makes it worth, um, you know, firing up the old computer and, and digging into the Google, just digging on in there. Um, but yeah, I don't want to ramble too much more. Hope you guys like the episode. Um, as you know, always HTT happen for everything. HTT happen dot com at HTT happen for all the socials. Like this, uh, give us five stars if you do like it. Uh, if you don't like it, please give us two stars. Tell us why you didn't like it because constructive criticism is always welcome. Uh, we'll see you guys next week with the next How Did That Happen.